in the post game show we're just going to jump on with Chet Niehaus following a 4 nothing win over Central Arkansas you get a first inning run that's all you needed when Alex Ernestine goes the distance you get the RBI double to score Chet Niehaus you score it Joey scores to win it uh, when you look back on on how one play can kind of sum up the success of the night what was it about that first inning I don't even think uh, one play could really sum it up Alex Ernestine dealt, he really only needed one run and that was that was it all credit goes to Ernie for the performance he had tonight, for sure. It's amazing looking at you seniors, though, and what goes into this weekend. You're out there with your mom and dad pregame. How does that affect a player when there's so much on the line, but there's also so much to celebrate? I mean, we came into today knowing uh, we don't get this day back. I mean, hmm. no telling how many games we got left, so we just came out and gave it everything we had. For a guy like you to finish your, your Colonel career, even regardless of how deep you guys go in the postseason, you're going to be top four in on-base percentage. You've got the second longest hitting streak in a Colonel career. You've heard a lot as a baseball player about how people project you with your height and your size to show them that not only are you a D1 player, you're one of the best to ever wear this red and gray jersey. How satisfying is it? I just like proving people wrong. <laughs> <laughs> size don't matter. Center field has been an area you have controlled this year. What have you seen from Lee Clark in left and, and Zane Washington in right field? There's there's just so much symmetry b between you three. You guys have been locked in all season. Uh, Lee Clark, uh, this off season, this man worked harder than anybody I've ever seen, and it's uh it's paying in for paying in uh, for him. And Zane Washington came in and worked his tail off, got him a starting job, and he took it and run with it. You know, it's Parents Weekend. There, there's so much to recognize, and we're, we're seeing Lee's family here and Zane's family here. And, of course, your, your dad is at every single game. When you get a chance to do it in front of the people that, that love you the most, how, how does it prove the point that there's a reason why you fell in love with this game and have spent a lifetime preparing to be a college player? Just seeing that smile on their faces is unreal whenever you get W. So. Well, you got a big it's one tonight. Chet Niehaus is sitting here leading the conference in on-base percentage. We can talk about the individual stats. He'll shut me up on it. So I try to get him in with you because right away you're complimenting Alex. You're complimenting your teammates. Congrats on this win. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. It's Chet Niehaus. We'll roll in to Alex Ernestine. We'll grab Coach Tibb before we wrap up this conversation. It's always fun when we get the six foot five guys on here. You got enough room? Yeah, we're good. How you feeling, Alex? Uh, words can't describe. <laughs> it's an awesome feeling and just a great team win that we had. And one more. That's it. Our goal is Sugarland, and tomorrow's another day. Today's over with, so just got to prepare and get ready for tomorrow. The man won't even give himself 24 hours to soak up this win because 1 p.m. will come quickly. 132 pitches tonight. Career-high 10 strikeouts. Your second complete game shutout. Inning 1-9, to nine, how did you keep together and pitch so strong? <clears throat> uh, I just had to stay composed, and uh, I've been working with Coach Butler these past couple weeks and just getting back to my old self because I went through a little funk and just trusted the process. And um, I, had a, I had a pretty good start last week. Just things didn't go our way as a team, and I just took that momentum and just knew what I had to do to help the team succeed and win today and just keep the momentum rolling. So I just stayed composed and just let my defense make plays behind me and just did what I could do for the team. Back-to-back -back complete games for Alex Ernestine. This one's certainly more satisfying. It ends in a victory. Take us through your week starting with Wednesday. You wake up and it's clear. Your, your body is going to be unkind to you on that day and then Thursday, the same result. You were supposed to pitch Thursday night, but a, a pretty serious 24-hour virus hit you. Yeah, I just woke up Wednesday not feeling myself. I was throwing up and it just couldn't stop, so I had to go to the doctor and and uh, he did what he had to do, and I felt better Thursday, but my body just wasn't feeling itself, and I wanted to go, And but Coach Butler said that he was going to give me extra day's rest and let Caden Hatcher go out and pitch, and he had to go uh, on an early day's rest, and he gave it his all, and he competed, and that's all we could ask, and we got the win late, and then I knew that I had to do my part this time, so whatever I could do, it just I stayed hydrated and just listened to my trainers and doctors and just got ready and prepared for this uh, start. You're one of only a few guys that has been through it all in four years. You started your college career right here. When, when you look out at this field, it's the last time you are able to pitch at Didier Field. Career high in strikeouts, career high in pitches, complete game shutout against the number three team in the conference. 63 games in your Colonel career. Why did everything click tonight? <laughs> I don't really have an answer. I just got to thank the man upstairs and just my time here has been a blessing and I just couldn't couldn't do it without the coaches and, and teammates I've had throughout the four years and just it was a great way to to end to pitch my last game at Ray Didier and uh, hopefully it's my la not my last game pitching as a colonel because I definitely want to make it to Sugarland next week and 
I'll do whatever it takes. If I pitch tomorrow, I'll pitch tomorrow. It doesn't matter. I just, I just want to win. So that's it. In the meantime, and I'm not trying to, to limit the life of you and your pops, but will your dad ever have a birthday that compares to tonight? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I don't think so, honestly. It just He t texted me this morning and said, you don't have to get me anything. Just wish me a happy birthday and just get a Colonel's win. That's it. So whether I threw four innings and got a win or did what I did today, it's just he wanted a win. So I said, you got it, and just did what I could for my dad. And he's, he's happy, and he's just, it's just seeing the smile on his face and just brings back memories, him coming to every single game that I, that growing up. And he lives 13 hours away, and he doesn't miss a start on TV. And, and when he can make it here, it's just awesome seeing my parents in the stands, and it's just a great feeling. I'll see you in Sugarland next week. Yes, without a doubt. The Colonels are coming, baby. Alex Ernestine, a complete game shutout. We'll hear from his manager. This man laying it all on the line, and you have to just celebrate these moments. There is still unfinished business, Coach Thibodeau, but you sat back during that five-minute conversation and just had your arms crossed, admiring every answer for Alex Ernestine. Special kid, special story, special night. Man, he had to bounce back from a couple of rough outings. I'm so proud of him that only someone with courage and and heart and desire and, and leadership, you know, capabilities can do. So great night for him tonight. Got a big one tomorrow, but I'm very proud of Alex Ernestine. What was your approach this week knowing what was on the line these three games? Just I did everything I could not to make our guys tight, did everything I could to keep them loose. Uh, we've, we've been here before. You know, my first year here we got swept at Texas State the week before we went. And, um, you know, we've been down in the dumps a little bit, and we turned around and swept to get in. So. And the biggest key was to make sure you just went back to you know square one. Let's, let's just do our thing. We don't need to do any kind of rally, rally the troops type of deal. Just let our coaches coach and let our players play and, and let them feel it. And when they, when they get it, they can go. So that's the main thing. That it is your seniors continuing to lead by example. And you get to have all their parents out on the field pregame and then to watch. First inning start with Joey Morales and Chet Neos, your two seniors scoring the first run, and then your senior Alex Ernestine going the difference. Uh, he was the difference in going the distance. The story of your seniors, where do you start with them? Well, it's it's just the tip of the hat to them for, for their determination. It's hard to, to always find it. It's hard over 56 games to always have that bear on your back and uh, to be able to keep doing it and, and be fearless and tension free in big moments and and just put the team on their back you know especially the last two days and it's awesome to see the bounce back in them but they've all done something big for us and then each and every single one of them whether it's throwing someone out making a great play making a big time hit or, you know working a walk making a great you know, complete game shutout anything that they can do they've done so far but let's see them do it again tomorrow. It's a 4-0 win for the Colonels. They have held UCA scoreless for 14 innings, and they have two wins in a three-game series that will sum up the season Sunday. Yeah. You find out where you're going to be playing. you got to win on Saturday to make sure that, that Sugar Land is a possibility. But what an interesting day it will be with New Orleans playing the doubleheader tomorrow. You can't worry about what anybody else is doing. How does the preparation of, of these two games prepare you to show up, focus on what you can, control what you can tomorrow? Yeah, you know, it's tough. First of all, we're playing a really good team. This is one of the best teams that, that we've faced in our league. And so um, they don't get swept, and they're very hard to score on. We had 12 hits tonight and only four runs because they get out of things because they can pitch, they can play defense, and, and they can make things happen. And uh, so we got our hands full. So all we can control is where our feet are at. And, and I'm really focused on being, you know, the best we can be in BP tomorrow. And I just don't want to let anyone outplay us on the last day of the season. And, and uh, you know, all the hard work, all the early morning runs, all the, you know, the grit and yes. determination and the, the courageous things we've had to do to get to this point, you know, let, let's go get it now. And there's no reason for someone to outplay us for nine innings, but we do have our hands full, and it's going to have to take a lot of grit and determination to get it done. But this is why you remind these players going into every season, here's who has worn your jersey before you. Here's what Daryl Hamilton, Bobby Dickerson, what Scott Sanders, what Mike Moeller, he, here's what they did in their time in Thibodeau. You're next. What's your legacy going to be when you leave here? You know, and it's important. This is Division One college baseball. It's elite. Uh, what are you going to do in your time here to make sure that 10 years from now it still matters? And so, uh, you know, even 20, 30 years from now, Bobby Dickerson got his degree 34 years later. And, you know, Scott Sanders did what he did, Mike Moeller, all those guys, you know, of course, Daryl Hamilton. But there's so many to say, well, who's going to be that next guy? And so, uh, and, you know, maybe tomorrow can be that day for somebody. Well, isn't that the beauty of moments like this as we look at the next crop of colonels? you got a bunch of eight, nine-year-olds out here enjoying your field. You never know where motivation comes from and where the next generation of colonels will come from. 
come from. I just I'm happy that those kids can be out there playing right now. It's a treat to watch them, and it just shows the awesome support from from the people around here. Coach Tibb, we'll see you Saturday afternoon. Sounds good. He is Seth Thibodeau, and this is Nichols Baseball. We'll give you one final look at Didier Field as we shut things down tonight. Ben Meyer Diamond glistening after a little afternoon rainstorm didn't prevent the Colonels from taking care of business. They win it 4 nothing. They are in position to reach the Southland Conference Tournament. It all comes down to Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m. on ESPN Radio New Orleans.